cognitive load theory explains how the brain processes and stores information, emphasising that working memory has limited capacity. When too much information is presented at once, the brain becomes overwhelmed, making it harder to learn and retain new material. The theory divides cognitive load into three types. Intrinsic load, which comes from the complexity of the material itself. Extraneous load, which results from unnecessary distractions or poor instructional design. And germane load, which supports learning by helping the brain organise and connect new information. Understanding cognitive load theory helps educators and designers create more effective learning experiences. Now let's look at the origin of this theory. Cognitive load theory was developed by John Sweller in the 1980s as a way to understand how instructional design affects learning. Sweller's research was based on cognitive psychology and experiments showing that people struggle to learn when too much information is presented at once. He argued that learning is most effective when unnecessary cognitive demands are reduced, allowing the brain to focus on meaningful content. Over time, researchers have expanded on his work by studying how different teaching strategies, multimedia presentations, and problem-solving techniques influence cognitive load. Now let's explore some common causes of cognitive load. One cause of cognitive load is the complexity of the material being learned. If information is too detailed or difficult, working memory becomes overloaded, making it harder to process. Another cause is poorly structured instruction, such as disorganised lessons or distracting visuals that require extra effort to understand. Additionally, multitasking increases cognitive load by forcing the brain to divide attention between multiple tasks, reducing efficiency. A final cause is a lack of prior knowledge, as learners who are unfamiliar with a topic must work harder to understand new concepts. These factors contribute to mental strain and make learning more challenging. Now let's examine the consequences of cognitive load. One consequence of cognitive load is difficulty retaining information, as an overloaded brain struggles to transfer knowledge into long-term memory. Another effect is slower problem-solving, since too much mental effort is spent on managing information rather than finding solutions. High cognitive load can also lead to frustration and decreased motivation, as learners feel overwhelmed and may give up on difficult tasks. In educational settings, excessive cognitive load can cause students to disengage from lessons, reducing their ability to absorb new material. Now let's look at some real-world examples of cognitive load in action. One example of cognitive load is a student struggling to understand a math problem with too many steps presented at once. Instead of focusing on solving the problem, they become overwhelmed by the complexity of the instructions. Another example is an employee trying to follow a poorly designed training manual filled with unnecessary jargon and unclear visuals, making it harder to learn the required skills. A third example is a driver who is distracted by multiple road signs and navigation alerts while trying to focus on traffic, increasing mental effort and reducing reaction time. In all these cases, cognitive load interferes with learning, decision-making and performance.